Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to come from a familiar story, amen, and we're going to be in the Gospel of Luke, the 15th chapter of this Gospel. We're going to begin reading at the 11th verse, and we're going to read down to the 23rd verse, amen. I believe we have omitted verse 21 just for time and space. But when you have it, I'd like you to say amen and like you to just stand with us. Didn't the young people do a masterful job? Amen. God bless you all. You all are outstanding. You are outstanding. Amen. The Gospel of Luke chapter 15, beginning at verse number 11. And it reads as follows. And he said, a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the youngest son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would have fain filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And now in verse number 22, it says, But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. Amen. Just turn to somebody and say, Don't take the long way home. All right, you may be seated in the presence of God. Just tell them, don't take the long way home. Amen. Now, we've all heard this very familiar passage of Scripture. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We've all heard this very familiar passage of Scripture. We've heard this story told multiple times. And every time I hear this story shared, the young son gets a bad rap. Because the young son says to his father, I want my inheritance now. <laughs> what he essentially was telling his father is that I really don't need you anymore. <laughs> And we focus on the audacity in which this young man spoke to his father. But there are some things that are redeemable about this young man because he is ambitious. He is an independent thinker. He is confident in his abilities. But there's only one problem that this young man has, and the young man wants his father's goods without his father's guidance. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. You've got to understand that this is a picture of the world in which we live, and the father represents God. And there's many folks that are walking around right now demanding the father's goods, 
demanding the gifts and the talents that he has given unto them, but they don't want to operate under the guidance of God. And we've got to understand that every gift that we have, every ability that we have, everything that has been given unto us has all come in, has all come from God. Hallelujah. If you're a gifted singer, a gifted speaker, a gifted chef, whatever your talents are, they all came from God. And you cannot use God's goods apart from his guidance and expect that all will be well. But in our culture, in our society, we have folks demanding his goods without his guidance. Mm -hmm. Now, just so that I am clear, his goods are not only gifts that he gifts to you, mm -hmm. but his goods also includes the air that you breathe. Mm -hmm. His goods also includes the blood that is running warm in your veins. His goods also includes the fact that he woke you up this morning. Mm -hmm. And once you understand that all that you are and all that you have and all that you ever hope to be comes from God, that ought to give you a renewed praise in your life. Don't take it for granted that you just are going to wake up. Don't take it for granted that you can just get up out of the bed and go and do whatever it is that you want to do. It is because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And don't take it for granted when you get up and just go about your day. But before you go about your day, you ought to pause and say, Lord, thank you for life. Lord, thank you for breath. Lord, thank you for health. Lord, thank you for strength. Lord, thank you for giving me another opportunity to get it right, my God. Because, listen, there is no guarantee of long life. There are many graves that are short graves. There are many graves that are medium graves. And so when you wake up in the morning, you ought to give God a shout of praise and God a shout of thanksgiving for the good things that the Lord has done for you. Come on and say, thank you, Jesus. And uh, I want to be clear that his goods are not just your life. It's not just the fact that you ought to have thanksgiving and praise to God, but understand that his goods even includes your hard work. I know there's somebody sitting here today that says, well, pastor, I understand that you said God has given me gifts. But you don't understand or you don't realize, Pastor, that I developed this gift. I worked hard at this gift. And I often think about my eldest son, Jeffrey, and I told him just yesterday, I said, I wish I could take a cross section of your mind to see how your brain operates, that you can play the organ and do all that you do. I said, I can't even conceive of how it's possible because my brain does not function that way. And we had this dialogue and he says, dad, it's really simple. It's all just patterns. See, there's 12 keys. And I just said, just stop right there. Because I understand that what he has and the capacity of what he can do is a gift that comes from God. Mm -hmm. Now, it is true that he has spent hours uh, at the piano and hours working that gift out. But when God gives you a gift, you've got to understand that the hard work you put into it to refine that gift is a part of the deal. When God made man and he created all that there was to create, he told Adam, he says, I want you to replenish the earth. In other words, Adam, I'm giving you all of this stuff, but Adam, there's some work that you have to do as it relates to what I am giving you. Come on and say hallelujah. What made God angry with the leader, with, with, with the owner that gave his servants talents? Do you remember he gave one ten talents, one five talents, and one one talent? And everybody worked with their talent except for the guy that received just one talent.
And what made the Lord angry was that he took that talent, he buried it under the earth, and he didn't do anything with it. Mm -hmm. If he would have done something with it, even if it wasn't much, the Lord would have been pleased. My point is simple, and that is when God gives you a gift, the fact that you can refine it, the fact that you can make it better, the fact that you perfect it, the fact that you have invested hard work in that gift doesn't mean that somehow you now take ownership of the gift. It is God that causes you to will and to do of his good pleasure. It is God that has given you the capacity to refine that gift. In fact, when the Lord delivered the children of Israel out of the wilderness in Deuteronomy chapter 8, he has this conversation with them. It's a conversation that I want to have with our young people. That now that God has brought you, hallelujah, now that God has kept you, he says, I don't want you to forget that when you were in the wilderness, it was God that fed you water out of a rock. He says, I don't want you to forget that when you were stuck in Egypt, hallelujah, and you couldn't get free yourself, you weren't fit to live and you weren't ready to, got to die. It was nobody but God that reached down and pulled you out of the muck and the mire and blessed your life. He says, I want you to remember that when God delivered you and when God brought you, understand that it is God that gives you the power to get wealth. Come on and shout glory. Don't you ever forget, young people, that it's God that brought you. Don't you ever forget that it's God that taught you. Why do you think we spend so much time investing in our young people? Why do you think we have third Saturday services and functions for our young people? Because some of you that are older can remember that it was something that was deposited in you during Sunday school. Something that was deposited in you in a vacation Bible school that came back to your remembrance and helped you through a difficult time. I'm just here to tell you that God does not expect us to take his goods and his gifts and very life itself without his guidance. And even when you work hard, understand that it is God that has given you the ability to refine the giftings that he has given you. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Tell somebody, don't you abandon God. Hallelujah. Don't you forget about God. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Hallelujah. You've got to understand that we have been called to work on these gifts and to work them out. And the problem that we have in this world is that everybody wants his goods without his guidance but if you get his goods without his guidance soon you will run out of his grace hallelujah you've got to understand that god's guidance includes god's grace hallelujah has the lord ever told you don't go there has the lord ever told you don't do that and embedded in his instruction was his grace that saved you from a world of trouble come on and shout glory I know I'm telling the truth. There are some times where you obeyed God and you didn't realize how much was on the line. But if you would have went the other way, it would have been a world of hurt and a world of trouble. But because you said yes to God, you found out that God's grace was wrapped up in your obedience. Come on and say hallelujah. Come on, somebody tell the truth. Because you realize when you disobeyed God and you walked your own way, there's times that God, despite your mess ups, he still covered you but can i tell you that there are some repercussions hey hey men there's some consequences and repercussions when we begin to uh, detach ourselves from god come on and say hallelujah it might not happen right away but what the bible says it was not many days after the young man had left that he had found himself to be in want and i'm here today to tell you that just because it seems like you've got his goods and all is going well with you that's not going to last for too long because when you take god's goods without his guidance you are distancing yourself from his grace 
Come on and say hallelujah. There is a grace that God gives us when we follow his instructions. There's grace that God gives us that he would protect us. I can remember as a young man, I was working a job and my coworker was this young lady. And she had begun to talk about how she needed a man. And she needed a man to help her with her two kids. And then she started glancing her eyes over at me. And I knew she was not a woman of the Lord. And I says, well, no, you know, I'm, I'm a saved man. I, I've, I've been saved maybe about two, three years. And uh, I was probably about 22 or so. And then we got married when I was how old? About 30, 29. I was 27. And so I'm a young man. Yeah, because she's older than me. I forget y'all. And this young lady decided she would cast her eyes on me. And I was like, Joseph, I said, let me get out of here from under this woman's clutches because nothing good can come from this. Mm -hmm. A couple of weeks later, I overheard her talking to her girlfriends about some kind of infectious disease that she had. And I said, God, I didn't know it. Mm. But your grace was wrapped up in my obedience. Come on and say hallelujah. You got to follow what God is telling you to do because God has blessings in store for you. God has a wealth of blessings if we follow what the Lord has called us to do. Come on and say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's grace when we obey God. Hallelujah. There is an abundant supply when we obey God. Hallelujah. Come on and shout glory. The reason that you need God's grace is because there will come a point in time in your life. Hear me good. Where your abilities and your capabilities won't be enough. There will come a point in time where your bank account won't be long enough. There will come a point in time where you need something that the lender cannot give you. There will come a time where your heart will ache and no amount of money can make you whole. Hallelujah. There will come a time where you are in distress and no amount of, of, of secular things or natural things will be able to satisfy the aching of your soul. There there will come a time where your outgo may exceed your income. Have you ever been there? Glory to God. But I want you to know that when you are placing God first in your life, hallelujah, when you have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying, uh, there's a song that says simply says, yes, glory to God. When you tell God yes, when you say yes to God, you open up access to stuff that God's got for you that no Linda can give you. Come on and say hallelujah. When you say yes to God, God says yes to you. My God and my God will supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. I'm just trying to tell you that there comes a time where your outgo exceeds your income. This young man was in such a space and and when he was in this space, God wanted this young man to know that you've got to say yes to the father. Because when you say yes to the father, I will supply all your needs according to your riches, according to my riches in glory. I will give you everything that you need. I will abundantly supply because I've got riches and I've got resources that you don't know of. I'll give you supernatural ability. My God, I'll do exceedingly and abundantly. I'll give you a favor that you don't deserve. I'll cause your gifts to make room for you before great men. I'll open up doors that no man can shut and I'll shut doors that no man can open because I'm giving you my favor and I'm giving you my power and you are now experiencing the power and the blessings of God. Come on and shout glory. And so God wants this young man to know, hallelujah, that when you are in a rock, 
in a hard space, when you are in a tough position, and when you don't have enough resources, whether it is physical, whether it is financial, or whether it is emotional, that God says, I will give you that supply, but you've got to say yes to me, and I will say yes to you. Hallelujah. What the Bible lets us know is that he wasted his goods and he ended up being in want. And when he was in want, instead of hooking up with God, the Bible says he hooked up with a friend. Thank you, Jesus. And, you know, we use that friend too lightly these days on Facebook. I think I got several hundred friends. Hallelujah. How many people know they really ain't friends? Mm -hmm. uh, you don't get that many friends in life. Jesus had 12 and one of them was a devil. Hallelujah. And only three of them could he take in the inner circle. And even those three, they fell asleep on him. So you don't get that many friends. But the Bible says that he hooked up with a friend. You got to be careful of who you call your friend. Hallelujah, because real friends will bring you to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In fact, if you're a real friend, glory to God, you would be bringing somebody to Jesus. Do you remember that man that was sick of the palsy and he was laying on the bed and the Bible says that he had four friends and they all took a corner of the mat and they brought him to Jesus because a real friend will bring you to Jesus. Glory to God. A real friend will tell you something about the Lord. A real friend will tell you that you're sick and you need to get better. A real friend will tell you about a surgeon that specializes in healing you your soul diseases. A real friend will tell you something about Jesus. I wonder if there's any real friends in the house today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But this man had a so-called friend and this friend did not take him to Jesus. This friend did not pull him closer to God. But what the Bible says is that this friend took him out to the field and this friend began to pull him away from God. And the way we know that this friend was pulling him away from God is because the friend told him, I want you to feed the swine, which was against Jewish law, mm. which means that this friend was directly him to break the rules of God. Anytime you got somebody in your ear that's bending your ear, telling you to do something that doesn't align with the word, that doesn't align with scripture, that doesn't align with what the word of God says, you've got to shut them off because now you're giving ear to fables. You're giving ear to seducing spirits. If it doesn't align with the word of God, you've got to say later, I'm out of here. I'm not going to give heed to seducing spirits. Some Something that sounds good, but is not good. Mother Eve got tricked by a seducing spirit because it sounded good, but it was not good. Is there anybody in here that can say hallelujah? Listen, young people, I know it might sound good. I know it might look good, but if it doesn't line up with the word of God, you ought to take offense of it. You ought to say it ought to repulse you. If it doesn't line up with the word of God, don't begin to cause it. Don't begin to get comfortable with it. Don't begin to sit down with it. Don't invite it in your living room. Don't cuddle up and watch a movie with it. If it don't line up with the word of God, you ought to say that in my spirit, my soul is vexed. I don't want nothing to do with nothing that doesn't have the power of God attached to it. I know you're fine, but you ain't that fine. So what would it profit a man or a woman to gain the whole world and lose their own soul. I'm in the soul winning business, baby. And I cannot compromise my soul in eternity because you look good. Come on and shout glory. Come on and shout glory. Come on and shout glory. Hallelujah. This 
this friend began to pull him away from the things of God. This friend began to cause him to drift from the things of God and told him, listen, I want you to go and feed these swine. And while he's out there feeding the swine, while he's out there with the master's goods, but not receiving the master's guidance, I want you to understand something, that there are some things that ought not take you the long way home. Come on and say, thank you, Jesus. But when we refuse the master's guidance, we find ourselves apart and afar off from God in a space that we don't even belong in, in a space that God has not intended for our lives. Tell somebody, don't take the long way home. May I tell you that the children of Israel, because they doubted God, God could not take them into the promised land immediately. May I tell you that the promised land was only 11 days journey away, but it took them over 14 hundred days to get to the promised land over 14,000 days in other words they could have been there in 11 days but it took them 40 years may I tell you that sometimes we are taking the long way home simply because we're not following God's guidance some things should have taken us days and they've taken us decades if you can't say amen flowers say ouch there are some things in young people I'm trying to encourage you right now because there are some places that God wants to take you. There's some heights that he wants to carry you to and it doesn't have to take you decades to get there. He can get you there sooner but if you're going to take his goods you've got to take his guidance and you've got to say yes to God. You've got to say yes when it is unpopular. You've got to say yes when you don't feel like it. You've got to say yes when you're ostracized. You've got to say yes when the boys don't like you you've got to say yes when the girls don't like you you've got to say yes to God when they treat you like an outcast just say yes to God because the same ones that's hating on you now will be the same ones with their hand out later come on and shout glory hallelujah come on and tell the Lord thank you has he ever made your enemies your footstool? Has God ever showed up for you? Has he ever proved who he is? Have he ever made you the head and not the tail? Come on and say thank you Jesus. God knows how to redeem you. God knows how to have the last say. I know they're talking about you now but I have not seen and ear hath not heard the good things. Tell somebody hold on to God because God's got a plan for your life come on and shout glory tell them it'll be well worth it the sacrifice will be well worth it they're talking about you it's going to be well worth it because the same one's talking about you they're going to say oh yeah I know them we went to school together oh yeah I know them they really somebody I always knew they was going to be special but they'll talk about you like a dog right now but it's going to be well worth it come on and say amen hallelujah this young man he finally came to himself and when he came to himself he said I have sinned against heaven and before my father he was seeking to align himself with heaven because if my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven I'll forgive their sin and I will heal their land he was seeking to align himself with heaven not with people but with heaven I wish there was somebody in here that was sanctified I wish somebody with the Holy Ghost would say I'm just trying to align myself with heaven how come you don't hang out with us anymore I'm just trying to align myself with heaven there are some things that you need to scroll right past because they don't edify you they don't align you with heaven there are some phone numbers that you need to delete out of your phone because they don't align you with heaven come on and say yes to the Lord come on and say yes God come on and say thank you Jesus there are some songs you need to take out your playlist all things are lawful but all things are not expedient 
come on and say hallelujah. I'm just trying to align myself with heaven because I don't want my journey that should take me days to take me decades. So I'm going to lay aside the weight and the sin that so easily sets me back. And I'm going to reach forward to those things which are ahead. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. This man was aligning himself with heaven. And when he aligned himself with heaven, he ran back to his daddy. And when he got back to his daddy, he says, Dad, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm not worthy to be called your son. But what I like is that the Bible says that this boy, he went to a far off country. He got far away from the father. He was way off in Never Never Land. He was way off and distant. It looked like he would never come home. It looked like his life was broken. But when he came to himself and he started coming home, what the Bible says is that the father saw him a great way off. I'm trying to tell you that no matter how far you've gone, God's grace can still see you. God's grace can still reach you. You're not outside of God's reach. I don't care what you've done. Don't care what drugs you've taken. Don't care what you smoked. Don't care what you've stolen. Don't care where you are. God's grace can follow you to the drug house. God's grace can follow you to the corner. God's grace can follow you to your home. And God can pick you up. He can turn you around. He can plant your feet on solid ground. There's nobody, nobody like Jesus. He saves from the guttermost to the uttermost. Is there anybody that knows that his grace can find you? His grace can reach you. His grace can save you. His grace can pick you up. There is nobody, nobody, nobody like Jesus. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. When he got to his daddy, the daddy heard his son. But he didn't respond to his son. He started speaking to his supply. Come on and say hallelujah. May I tell you that when you align yourself with heaven, God starts speaking to his supply. And he turned to one of his servants. He says, I want you to get a robe. But I don't want you to just get any robe. I want you to get the best robe. Come on and say hallelujah. I know you've done wrong. Hallelujah. I know you felt broken. But young people, I've got to tell you that God just doesn't have any old robe for you. God's got the best in store for you. God doesn't want you to just settle. God says, I've got the best for you. If you align yourself with heaven, don't worry about your biological clock ticking. When you align yourself with heaven, don't worry about what other folks are saying. God says, I've got the best. He said, get him the best robe. Get my ring and put the ring on his finger. My God, you want to put your ring on his finger. But when you give him that ring, don't you know that is a sign of authority? Yes, I know it is a sign of authority. Because as soon as he aligns himself with heaven, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you can ask what you will of the Father in my name and it'll be done for you. Don't you know you ought not take the long road home because he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Don't take the long road home because if you draw nigh unto God, God will draw nigh unto you. Don't take the long road home because if you trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him, he will direct your path. Don't take the long road home because there's one thing I've desired of the Lord and that will I seek after 
that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Come on and say thank you Jesus for getting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those which are ahead. I press, I press toward the prize of the high call of God in Jesus Christ. Tell your neighbor, don't take, don't take, don't take the long road home. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Come on and give him glory. Come on and give him praise. Come on and thank him. Come on and bless him. Come on and worship him. Come on and glorify him. Come on and exalt him. I'm not taking the long road home. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on and say hallelujah. Come on and bless his name. Hallelujah. I'm determined to walk with Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm determined to serve him. Glory. I'm going to look towards him. I'll lift my eyes to the hills from which comes my help. My help comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Glory. 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 Come on and put those hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Give them praise in your own way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.